Hi, Tech Rabbit here. Uh, this is kind of what you look like if you have a family and Wi-Fi keeps on kicking out for one reason or another. Anyway, I just thought I'd sort of go through some argumentation why I've decided to actually move to Gigabit Ethernet. Not for everything, of course, that's unrealistic, unre but for the majority of the heavy-duty equipment. Um, one thing is I have a one gigabit fiber um, connection to the house, and um, really utilizing the full bandwidth isn't really possible through Wi-Fi. Um, just as a little bit of background, I've, I've owned both um, Asus and Linksys high-end uh, wireless consumer routers, and, and I mean, really on the boundary to prosumer, or they're on on the prosumer level, but not moving over to the professional side. I've had a whole bunch of clients running on the 2.4 gig meg and 5 meg um, bands, so it's a mixed network. In my test, I can do like a 140, 160 megabits per second from a PC node, so it's not that bad. But however, I've seen random dips in performance, so from time to time the performance is good and from time to time it's not, and then if you make like large file copies and file transfers, then, then it can be a problem. Um, so, um, experienced random disconnects. So suddenly a Wi-Fi device can just drop off the network for no apparent reason. Um, I've tried to use extenders, but I must say that they've just caused more disruption to the Wi-Fi network that I have. And, and this applies all to Asus equipment and Linksys equipment. I haven't noticed any difference. So I, I try and stay away from extenders. Yuck. Um, also experience random um, denial of service problems where you just can't get the device on the Wi-Fi network. It says an incorrect password or you know, similar error messages, even if the password is valid and the device has been connected to the network for years, for a very long time. Uh, absolutely, there's a need for rebooting both the router sometimes, which is a real pain because then it drops everything and then um, some of the clients need to be rebooted. Also, reconnecting the clients to the Wi-Fi network is needed from time to time, even to the extent of actually completely removing the Wi-Fi settings and, and reconnecting, like entering the password again. Um, you know, my abstract thing over the years here now with the Wi-Fi is that uh, I think it's uh, partially overloading. We have very many, um, wi lots of different uh, Wi-Fi equipment, um, cell phones, cameras, consoles, PCs, uh, you know. And then the, the problems get worse from time to time, so I've never been able to connect it to anything that we do inside the house, but from time to time there's, a, there's what I call disturbance waves that come in and, and then everything, nothing is stable for, for a while. Um, and then suddenly it will become stable again, so you, and you don't get any reasonable from Asus or Linksys, the, the log information, and better in Asus with logs, you couldn't really see anything that meant anything. Like it, the, the router doesn't think that there's an issue with anything in particular. Um, you know, one of the options is that I have some faulty clients, or which makes it that either the client or the, the router itself gets into a faulty state. So, um, yeah, those are the summary of the um, issues around Wi-Fi that I've had. And uh, I'm not that bigger believer that the new generations of Wi-Fi will really make the situation that, that much better. Plus, the thing is you can't upgrade all your clients to the latest. I mean, where you're going to get problems is that you can't just swap out all your client equipment to the latest Wi-Fi standard every time the Wi-Fi standard upgrades itself. It's not realistic. Um, you know, other secondary ops. I want to max out what I pay for. I mean, uh, we have, a, as I said, a gigabit fiber connection. Um, so I really would like to be able to you, enable um, full access to that from all, yeah, 
I mean, all reasonable clients. I mean, we're talking PCs, consoles, and that, the like, the ones that actually have a physical wireless, wired connection option. Reliability. I really want to get away from this, you know, this whole pile of unexplained problems that one has to deal with. I mean, it, I mean, you have kids screaming at you, and you have your wife upset, and, and it's just uh, now. Um, so what I want to do is primarily with this gigabit upgrade is to uh, reduce the load on the Wi-Fi network, reduce the number of clients that are dependent on the Wi-Fi network, um, and then only have the clients on the Wi-Fi network that absolutely need to ha be on, the, like the devices that don't have a physical. Um, network connection or re can be reasonably organized to have one. And then to increase performance, of course, because you know there's, there is no Wi-Fi that can max out the gigabit connection we currently have for the internet. And, and you know, I'm, I'm living in a region where our internet uh, is, I mean, we have a quite a fat back end for the internet in general in the region that I live in, so I, I can I can um, utilize in some, not at, not the maximum one gig of uh, one gig of course, but uh, I can get up to quite high speeds transferring stuff over the internet to major providers like Google and stuff. Yeah, and um, over the year, year, I mean, I had a full start on this initiative once upon a time, and then um, I had researched some stuff in terms of installation and. Um, Procedures, and then I've been. This been uh, my wife didn't want me to do it because I was going to drill holes in walls and, and d dive into the attic, the, the usual. And um, but now I've actually changed my objectives, so the installation objectives. So anyway, now it's like uh, no holes in walls. I'm not going to drill holes in walls, and I don't want to disrupt any existing installations. That's electrical or old cable networks or anything like that. So I don't want to um, be putting cables into the same piping or anything that the existing stuff runs. Um, low cost in terms of parts and installation, so I want to keep to the basics. I actually haven't gone to the lowest cost in, in, in my case, but um, you could probably do it even cheaper than the way that I'm doing. No attic diving. We, we have an attic that has uh, fiberglass insulation, which is like 40 years old, so um, every time I go up there I get alert, major, I don't know major, but I, I, I just, I, I itch for a week, so I, I don't want to do any attic diving, not in this house. Uh, no high ladders, I don't want, to, well actually it's a bit dependent on the house you have and stuff, but I actually have a, I have a do we have a one-story house, so I can get away with not climbing on high ladders, so I suppose a diffuse point in and such. Also, I want to be able to replace the network, the physical network. Like if it, if, if, oh, I don't know, maybe it's, it's coming maybe five years from now, I want to go to a 10 gigabit network, then one doesn't have to like rip out cables from walls and stuff. So I want to be able to just go and relatively easily replace the infrastructure. Now the infrastructure I plan to use now could theoretically um, go up to 10 gigs, and I, I, I personally, I mean, I don't run a business as such, so I don't need 10 gigs, but let's say that if I could get to like, I, I would expect that the fiber internet could go to like two, three gigabits. So maybe if I can get up to that level of speed, I'll be, I'll be happy enough. Uh, and that's that. So anyway, so that's my summary on and an argument why why go, you know, Ethernet. We've been surviving very many years on, on a Wi-Fi only solution, but now I think that because we got our um, internet pipeline upgraded not so long time ago, and, and 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 all these issues that we've been having, and it doesn't matter how much money I spend on um, prosumer routers, uh, it, it, it doesn't help, uh, and I'm so fed up with spending money on, on um, Wi-Fi equipment. <laughs> I'd sooner invest it in physical equipment with a, with a higher probability of success, and plus the, you can't beat the performance. So. But anyway, um, I thought we would um, take a quick um, parts overview.
and then also um, do a quick me measurement of performance also, just to, um, a baseline performance, nothing really super technical, but something that everybody could do or find a tool that's similar. And do. So um, let's move into that. Okay, now we're going to get into some measurements. And, um, you know, every, every region has its own favorite web based measurement system uh, for um, gauging the performance of your broadband connection. And um, uh, also, um, we, we have one in our, and it's called Bread Bonds Colon in our region. Of course, you can use your own custom tools also to measure, or you can just uh, do different things on the internet. But I thought this was uh, like the easiest sort of summary tool to use. So let's try, and this is the measurement from my uh, main workstation you know, over the Wi-Fi network. So that's um, and then if we say that we have, let's see what other options they have. We'll find it. Well, that was the top layer. Right? So that's the one up to one gig. And then um, if you have this this result, and then you ask it to evaluate, um, then you see that <laughs> it writes the connection as being really bad and suggests that you complain. Like, but I mean, this is of course due to the OI. Okay, so that's that one, and then we move on to um, the next measurement point. Okay, now we're going to um, see what the performance is in the office. So let's do the same measurement. Wow, the wow, that's a lot higher. This is in a better location in the house. That's not that much better. So, that's the one type of fiber. <laughs> it still says it's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's life. And move on to the next one. So, my son, what do you think about our Wi Fi network? Should I increase the lights just to interrogate you some more? No. No? What do you think? Does it work well? Wi Fi network for gaming? Yeah, I'm going to get a couple of people. For often. Yeah, can you say that in English? This is an English YouTube channel. Oh, okay, so this is for your YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> the lights are really. Uh, it's just focusing on the light, it's not answering the question. I think okay. I have to increase the yeah, light. but uh, the boy for why are you increasing? <laughs> okay, thank you. But uh, yeah, I get disconnected a bit uh, too often. Think it'll be better with gigabit Ethernet? Yeah, I will say yeah. so. Look, we need to measure the performance of the, in the Wi Fi connection on your computer, is that okay? Okay. Uh, should I? Just go and do something else. I will take it. Okay, this is my son's gaming computer. As I they always do, it gets a bit disconnected from time to time. So we'll just kind of measure the same. It's very hard to film in here, it's not that much space. But anyway, let's hope you can see this. I wonder what kind of a result we're going to get. Uh, pretty much the same as my workstation. Oh, that's quite low. Upward. Ah, we won't bother with the comparing broadband. No, no, already. But that's crap. So anyway, one more point, and that'll be the next one.
Okay, back to my workstation, now directly connected to the router. Well, let's see what kind of a result we get now then. I see better figures than that actually from the um, broadband. I'm probably going to have to investigate, or actually probably going to have to try the measurement again later and then see what we get. Oh, for now that can be the reference point, but it, sh it should be better than that, I, and I have seen it being much better than that. So I haven't actually taken a measurement from the router for a while. Okay. Oh, welcome to my studio corner. Um, just going to have a little bit of a talk about um, installation preparation parts. And um, the first thing I started with is to make a very sophisticated plan of how to sort of run the cables and stuff, just to figure out approximately what cable lengths to use. Um, so we can cover the cables first. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go with prefabricated cables with the ends already processed. I mean, I know you can buy uh, like free cable and the ends to put on, but really getting them all crimped properly and everything is, you know, I don't want to, something I don't want to do with so many other wires that are really. And um, all the cables I'm taking a minimum uh, Cat6 or Cat6A. So that, that'll be, yeah. I mean the the speed, how much uh, how much they can put down a cable increases all over the, by time. So I mean you can uh, basically I think that uh, when we're talking about my idea of like you know three gigs, yeah, should be able to this this cable should be able to handle. So anyway, I got um, there's going to be of course a whole pile of cables, but um, I just thought I'd go through the examples. So you need like inside cables for inside use only of different lengths based on the analysis you make and then also for the uh, aesthetical things then you need to make sure that um, what, or uh, confirm and ask what color should they be I mean, my wife prefers white if there's going to be cables hanging around and then um, for outside use <laughs> that seems black's the rule, but uh, for outside use, because I'm going to run the cabling pretty much outside on the side of the house, um, you need to make sure that you buy cable that is um, ultraviolet protected and uh, water resistant, and partially if you are intend to paint over these, like if you have a wooden house and you, you want to repaint, to make sure that they can ha the cable can handle chemicals, so that you don't sort of put this cable up. <clears throat> a couple of years later you paint it and then it destroys the cable so, so it's not recommended to use cables that are meant for inside use uh, on the outside so I, 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 I've taken this type of cable or various lengths of this type of cable and um, then we're going to um, sort of connect it up so what I have is my secret weapon right now Got to take scissors. I'd like to show that. So, the magic of videos. Um, 
So I got a bunch of um, through the window cables. So they're like flat like that and very flexible. And I have an ethernet on both sides. And then it comes with uh, self gluing double sided tape or screws or you can use both. So that will get me through doors and through, well not through, but on the side of windows and uh, on the side of doors. And I'll be showing the installation later. And um, then um, I bought some tape to put some extra, because when you you connect the uh, network cable to that, then that's good. it might be a bit too exposed. So in some locations where I'm going to install it, then I'm going to put this uh, um, uh, duct tape around it. Uh, also, um, if it's going to be black, I might actually at the bottom well show during the session. It might be that I want to actually put the, the white cable on on a little bit of a section of the black to hide it that it's actually black. I couldn't find outside capable cables in any other color than black. <laughs> Don't ask me why. And um, to hang it up also some just show some of these normal ones that you actually just nail up nail up holders and then I've prepared myself with examples of different ducting um, you know, wider ones sort of yeah and then even round so when I'm doing the installation, I'm going to see um, what one will need. And then I'll use the appropriate one or not use. I mean, these are quite expensive, this sort of ducting, so I won't, I'm only going to use it in certain places. Most of the places I'll try and get along with the cheapest solution. And then, um, I mean, if you've ever dealt with Ethernet or, or not, but I mean, the... The, you, if you're going to distribute it in a room, like you need to take an exit from the main eth Ethernet trunk line, then you need to have a switch. So I've got um, TP-Link uh, 1 gigabit switches. And then of course these would need to be swapped out if I want to increase the speed of the network. <laughs> but uh, You know, it's a balance of cost. I mean, if you take, um, if you take CAT6 cable and uh, gigabit switches, like TP-Link or some other manufacturer, that, that's that's kind of like the cheapest base. Uh, then you, then uh, maybe let's say two or three years from now, then if you want to increase the speed, then it's not such a big deal because then then the you know the switches that can do two or three gigs or even up to ten will be so much cheaper. I mean this this stuff is getting cheaper by the year. I mean nobody could ever ma imagine that a consumer could even get gigabit networking in the house. Oh, that was just a pipe dream. Uh, and now they've increased the speed. You can put down a cable, uh, even even lesser than a Cat6 cable. You know, if you don't care, you can just test. <laughs> you can take a lower Cat-rated cable and see if it works. People have done that, and it works fine in some cases, as long as the length. Uh, because I mean, basically, when you define Cat6, it, it means that it's, it meets certain minimum requirements on, on a specific level of communication. It doesn't mean that the other cat standards won't work. That's why it gets confusing when you look at the listings of cat. It says uh, cat 6a compatible with and then it gives you basically all the other cat um, types. So you know, Because it's backward compatible also. But it can also be forward compatible. It depends on how you call it. Uh, more coffee. Yeah. And um, these are good base switches. I've used them before. And um, so when we en enter a room, then you um, come in with the Ethernet cable connected in there, and then you leave to continue the the, um, the trunk line, and then you can take out four of the devices in the room. So in the in the rooms where there isn't that many devices, I'm going to use the smaller ones with less ports, and then. When it comes to the media center, center setup, then I'll use the one. And you, and you can get a TP Link and other manufacturers of switches, you can get them with like a very many different um, numbers of ports. 
So it's it's um, you, you, so that's the importance to actually pre-analyze like what is your situation in, in your specific setup. Um, what so then it gives you the cable length, what type of cable it needs to be, and then how many switches do you need potentially. Of course, switches can be also added later. You don't have to buy them all in one go. I'm going to actually, in one room, I'm just going to d use a pass-through since there isn't any equipment in that room that's going to use use the Ethernet yet. But, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to start with. And um, yeah, we continue. Consider subscribing. Um, hit the bell icon to get notified for more because there's going to be um, more um, videos released on this same subject going through the installation and commissioning and um, yeah and tell other people about it I mean if there's other people interested in possibly moving to a physical network and of course I do realize that every house apartment has the, the different requirements but if you if you like take some of these ideas and then adapt them to your environment then, and, and, and I do think that I've the, the idea of not drilling the holes in walls and stuff to um, actually do, yeah skip the attic diving uh, is actually a, a relatively good compromise in, in terms of many things and um, I'll see you in the next one